Hey, it's Corn Fu. Uh, today, I want to briefly talk about my process of taking a sketch and turning it into um, a t-shirt idea. Um, and if it's if I look kind of sweaty, it's because I am I'm at my garage right now. It's like a thousand degrees out here. So anyway, sketchbook, affordable, um, mobile, all that fun stuff. And you can mess up in it. It's it's nothing permanent. You throw some lines in there. You experiment. You discover what you're not good at. I try to fill one of these a year. That forces me to always be drawing. It can be doodles, it can be full-blown illustrations. What I normally do is start off with um, pencil sketch, and then I'll ink it, maybe I won't ink it, depending on what the end goal is for it. But um, I always have this with me so that when I hear a phrase or an idea comes to me or I see something that triggers an idea, I record it in here because my memory is crap. Like, I forget stuff two minutes from now, so I gotta get it in here. One of the pieces that I'm gonna be working on that I want to carry all the way through and show you the process is a graffiti new school style tape deck or tape cassette sorry not the deck um there's a cassette yeah I remember what these were um it has tentacles so I'm, I'm gonna monsterify this so um, it has a tongue and teeth and all that fun stuff I want to have a lot of fun with it so normally the pencil stage is where I work out all the problems the flow of it the angle the depth uh, just the energy behind it. That's where I figure that out. What I can put in there, how much I can put, how much I can pull back out to get the idea across. Once I get to that point, then it goes to one of three places, depending on what the end goal is. If it's just a digital piece, I will send it into Photoshop. I'll take a scan of it and put it in Photoshop as a guide layer. Then I'll use Kyle Webster brushes. Um, they're great. I think they're free. Oh, I just touched my face. COVID-19 violation. Anyway, I digress. Kyle Webster brushes are awesome. So they simulate real world tools. They're not exactly, but they're pretty darn close. So I use those um, and then that's where I refine the piece. Color it, ink it, whatever. Um, sometimes I go with an oil painting style. Sometimes I just do a flat vector color style, even though it's in Photoshop. Um, that's just for the digital piece. For something that I want to be a little bit more meticulous, I'm gonna jump into Illustrator. So for this piece that I'm working on now, I wanna do something I've never done before. And that is do a woodcut block. I think that's what it's called. You get a linoleum block and carve out a design and use that as a stamp to print on your designs on paper or a t-shirt or whatever. So I'm gonna use Illustrator for that. The third way is I just use micron pens and brushes. I had to get some supplies to do this woodcut thing. Um, so I went to Jerry's R Ramen in Wilmington. Dave, you're awesome. Thank you for having such an awesome store. So for eight bucks, I got this sweet, heavy <laughs> nine by 12 uh, linoleum block. It's got this thick, obviously linoleum on it. It's like a hard rubber and you can carve that out with some carving tools. It's got particle board. Don't get that wet. <laughs> It'll come apart on you. But yeah, so eight bucks. Then I got the cutting tool eight dollars as well I think this is all under twenty dollars and then I've got extra blades so this little cutter blades th th these are for more detail so in my original drawing I have like tentacles and teeth and whatnot that's I'm gonna use that to get those kind of deals, details and if I want to get any kind of shading then I might use this I don't know I'm still figuring this out all right so <laughs> that process is gonna involve um, taking that sketch, refining it as much as possible, then taking it into Illustrator, and then using the width tool, which I'll kind of briefly explain when I'm in that, um, as well as the blob brush, some of the 3D aspects. Now, some people might say, oh, you didn't hand draw that, you cheated on that part. It's the end idea. Like, if you can draw it all from scratch, great. If you can draw without photo references, great. If not, it's not cheating. Um, if I really thought like that, well then I wouldn't use pencils. I would go create my own carbon. I'd go burn a stick. And, you know, it, I, we can get really crazy with that. Cheating is lifting something directly and dropping it. I'm talking about using photo references, using the tools that are available to make your piece really refined and tight. A, it saves you time so you're not worried about how to do it. You're more worried about what it looks like and the idea behind it. And that's the goal is to create a cool looking piece. And with these tools, it also makes it gives you the ability to create content a little bit quicker. Quicker is not always better, but it's great to be able to generate stuff versus spinning forever trying to figure out how to do something.
Okay, here I paste in my initial sketch, uh, put on a guide layer, and I set it to like 30 or 40%. And now I'm blocking in the shapes, just uh, circles, squares, whatever. And then I'm building up the pieces that I'm going to then take into the 3D. It's effect 3D, and then you can extrude, revolve, whatever. Once I get my base shape down, I can extrude that out. And you can see right there. I can sit and play around with it, rotate it. It's not, um, it's not permanent until you expand it. So you can kind of mess around and get the right angle. I finally uh, get sick of messing with it, as you can see here. Stuff isn't quite lining up right, so it was, it was a nice try. Then I go back and I just start tracing and just doing the normal stroke around the whole thing, using a pen tool. Putting down points, pulling corners to round it out a little bit, just to get the right shape. I jump back into the 3D tool here to do the extrude of the little spindles that are inside of the tape. Um, just That's a big time saver for me versus drawing it. Then I go back to the more organic stuff like the tongue and the teeth, which I use, again, the pen tool to drag that out. These, this is still stroke, you, so you can make it thicker, thinner, whatever, in the stroke palette. Um, here I'm using the pen curvature tool. It has like bezier curves to it, so you get some really, really nice sweeps without sitting and thinking about it too much. I still go back in and tweak it a little bit more. Here I'm building out the rest of it. Um, in outline mode here, I think it's Command Y, lets you see like a wireframe mode so you can see really if your points are touching or not. That's really handy. Um, yeah, so it, this is just a lot of back and forth drawing pieces and getting the flow right. Again, the pen tool, or the pen curvature tool here. Um, really just trying to get pieces that overlap and connect together. I want to get it as clean as possible before I outline it. Now when I outline it, it basically turns the stroke into vector shape. Then I can um, like unify the whole thing and then I can actually duplicate that layer and then release the clipping path it's called. And that'll give me my fill shapes, all the, all the shapes that are inside the black part. Here I'm still tweaking. You can sit and tweak this stuff endlessly, which I, a lot of times I do. Here I'm cleaning up some of the points. Um, yeah, rounding it out, making sure there's no jagged pieces that overlap or sticking out. You want it to have a really organic feel. Um, here's where I was releasing the outline stroke that I expanded out to shapes. Then I can just go in and take those shapes and color them. Kind of experimenting with the colors, messing around. Um, this is the fun part. A little bit of ashes there or uh, embers on the cigarette. Um, here I'm using the width tool to get the highlights of the uh, tentacles. So that's shift W and that lets you grab a point and drag left or right. Left sharpens it, right makes it wider. Um, what's cool about that is it's, uh, it's not destructive so you can go back and edit it later until you expand it. But you can actually hold down option key and drag one side or the other of the handle. So you can make it really have a really, really thin to thick, thick to thin feel to it like an inkbrush. Uh, here I'm using the blob brush. It's super fun. Super hard to control because it's blob. But it's vector so you can go back and mess with points and stuff that have been created by it. Um, yeah, I know I breezed through this really, really fast. I hope it was helpful and you learned something from it. Thanks for watching.